mental strength means that we, when we are impacted by something, when we are in the muck, we commit to continuing through it. That we commit to seeing it through. We commit to allowing ourselves to be humans who have a full range of human experiences. And so it comes a lot down to being able to process an emotion, being able to not neglect or turn our back on our, on ourselves when we're having an experience or an emotion or going through something, right? It comes back a lot to that like radical acceptance of like, this is what my humanness is going through right now. And it's not necessarily right or wrong or good or bad, right? It's just what's happening in this moment. And I'm going to be with myself through it. I'm going to see it through. I'm not going to spiral out. I'm not going to sit here and then like massage it and like fondle it and indulge every little negative thought and every defeatist attitude. But I am going to just notice that what I'm feeling right now is hard. Right? And we think about you know, when we're having like a difficult emotion, if we were to just able to keep it clean, right? So keep that emotion clean. I'm feeling sad feeling bad, I'm feeling mad. And what my client, one of my clients just said, hardest feeling for me is feeling jealous. I hate feeling jealous, right? But just acknowledging I'm feeling jealous. It's just part of being human. There's no such thing as a wrong emotion. Mm -hmm. There's just emotions. And just being able to acknowledge that to ourselves and just being like, you know, this is what I'm feeling, feeling anxious, feeling worried, feeling scared. This is manageable this is a feeling. This is a pretty manageable feeling. What becomes unmanageable is when we start to kind of make things messy. And these are called like secondary emotions where we start to have thoughts about our emotions. Mm. So I shouldn't feel this way. What's wrong with me? I just need to get over it. I just need to be more positive. I just need to not let things bother me. I just need to not get so worked about stuff, up about stuff. Or then we do it external where we're like, that person needs to not be like that. If only people were like this, I wouldn't have to feel this way, right? And we kind of just like create all of this other stuff around it. And that's what we get stuck under. So mental strength comes so much from just being able to acknowledge whatever it is that we are thinking or feeling accept that this is just part of the expression of my humanity in this moment, and then deciding what do I want to do with this now. And even just this like simple exercise of being able to acknowledge and accept that we are humans who have a whole range of different experiences and emotions, even that one simple thing does so much for allowing us to move through whatever it is that we're struggling with. Because often it's the resistance, it's the judgment, it's right. the criticism, Right? It's the self-rejection that comes with whatever it is that we're going through or feeling that that's what we get stuck under. Yeah. I love that concept of just like keeping that emotion clean, being like keeping it in its like container and allowing yourself to feel it, but not attaching all these other, other thoughts around your emotion yeah. where it gets messy. That's actually really game changing. I'm sure even that, that point alone can help a lot of people. Yeah. And it's amazing how often we don't let ourselves do that. We think that there's like this right way to be human. Even I had a client recently that was like, I sometimes feel like I have to win therapy. <laughs> but like I have to like, you know, like if I'm feeling something, I have to like justify it or, you know, wrap myself up in it and like, you know, tell myself that it's like okay and talk myself. And I'm just like, it's okay to just sometimes be like things suck right now. And that's just it. Right. And we'll talk yeah. about it, but we don't always have to like tie it up in a bow. Right. Wow. Okay. So do you have like a favorite chapter or a favorite les lesson that you shared in this book that you can share with us today? I really, really like the section on self-compassion. So self-compassion, it's this word, a kind of a term that gets tossed around a lot. And we don't really know what it means. But the work of Dr. Kristen Neff, who has basically like devoted her a lot of her research and her career into pulling apart what it, what self-compassion means. And she's done some really, really beautiful work around it. And really just one of the key elements of self-compassion is just learning to talk to yourself as you would a good friend, right? That friend that you know isn't perfect, but you love them. You think they're great. You believe in them. 
you know that they sometimes make mistakes or maybe make choices that aren't like the best for them, but it doesn't change how you feel about them. You're still always on their side and rooting for them. So if we could start taking on a little bit more of an attitude with that for ourselves, like what would that be like? If we're like, man, I, you know, that wasn't my most shining moment. I'm like, I just had a really hard day or I just yelled at my partner or I just, you know, uh, frittered away the whole day. I didn't get anything done. Or I just like got into this thought spiral of being like, oh, I suck and I'm not good enough or whatever that is. What if we went to that friend and told them this thing? What would they say to us? They wouldn't be like, oh yeah, you suck. Oh my gosh, what's wrong with you? Oh my gosh, you're pathetic. They might be like, oh, okay, what was going on there? What was happening? Right? Why, why did you like lose it? Why did you get so upset? Um, what was happening inside of you? Um, why did you kind of, you know, fritter away the day and let yourself get kind of taken away by these things that are not the best for you? Right? What was going on there? And just being able to like just listen and get curious and being able to offer that reassurance, be like, you know what? You are human. And yeah, that probably wasn't your most shining moment, but um, you're a human being and you're allowed to not be perfect all the time. And there was probably some other things going on there that were driving some of that, right? Like what would it be like if we talked to ourselves that way and got curious and understanding and compassionate with ourselves instead of immediately harsh, hard, and judgmental. Yeah, I feel we're just more supportive and understanding of ourselves. Understanding we don't have to be perfect all the time. Like yeah. it's, it's normal to go through these ups and downs. Yeah, it's not saying like, oh, you're terrible. It's saying, oh, not your most shining moment. What do you want to do differently next time? Right, but I still love you. You're still amazing, right? Yeah. Having that like yeah. positive, yeah, love it. Yeah. This isn't this isn't like the the epitome of who you are as a person this this decision or this moment or this outburst or this struggle that's not that's not the epitome of the de definition of who you are this was an experience that you had